Well, you know, we just ended uh, 2016 and we're starting now to 2017. And I just wanted to take a moment uh, to, to share with the probation family. Uh, we're going to be doing this periodically, but right now I'd like to talk about a couple things, at least one main thing that I think it's important. Uh, you know, twice a year, uh, I attend through the National Institute of Corrections, Executives and Probation. And this is a think tank, a networking uh, opportunity where about 20 different states come together. And we actually share information and we talk about challenges within our organizations across the state. And one of the things that always seems to come up in these discussions has to do with justice reinvestment or sentencing reform. And what I wanted to share with you today is, is that South Carolina, I believe, is in really good shape in terms of justice reinvestment and sentencing reform. Some of the other states uh, that are at these meetings, uh, they are not real involved at this point with uh, justice reinvestment. Some of the states are just now starting to take this on. And I wanted to share that with you because we have been doing this now for over five years. And so we're, we're not necessarily the lead state, but we're close to the top as being one of the first to, to really implement justice reinvestment and sentencing reform. And as a result of that, uh, you know in South Carolina, we have reduced, we've been a big part, I should say, in reducing the prison population. And I just re recently reported uh, to the Sentence Reform Oversight Committee uh, that over the last five years, we've saved the state of South Carolina a little over $30 million. That is huge in terms of the success of the Sentence and Reform. And so I want you all to know that South Carolina is really uh, sort of taking the lead in justice reinvestment and sentence reform because it's been mandated uh, by our legislators uh, to, to what I call a game changer. It has actually changed the way we do business, but it's been in a positive way. So in 2017, I want you all to continue uh, to improve on making sure uh, that we continue to keep our revocations down, uh, that we continue to uh, follow the mandates and the guidelines of the sentencing reform, but we still have some work to do. I understand that as a result of this sentencing reform that you know, we have to track our administrative monitoring and, and the fact that the fines and fees are, are being collected differently and it has and it had an impact on how we uh, track those types of things. Our DAR system as well as um, our uh, com uh, compass tool, all of these things are required by sentencing reform, but we have done an outstanding job uh, for the last couple of years in making sure that we meet these mandates. So. I wanted to take this moment to congratulate everyone, but most important, let you know that out of the states that I have had conversations with, and these states have been from the Southeast, from the Midwest, uh, from far away as Alaska, uh, this is something that we are really, really ahead of in, in many ways. And I don't think that a lot of you realize uh, how, how much work you've done in such a positive way. So I really wanted to take this time to congratulate you and to say to you to keep up the good work. Uh, I can't think of a more of an evidence-based uh, response to this other than to talk about the fact that we know in South Carolina we've do reduced the population in the prison system and saved the state uh, 30, over $30 million. That is some of the most evidence-based information that I can share with anyone. And I think that that puts us in a really good position in terms of uh, making sure that uh, our mission is being met and that the mandates of the citizen reform guidelines are being followed. So thank you very much, and I look forward to sharing more with you in the near future.